You know, there are all kinds of interesting people that live right around your neighborhood, like, oh, the postman and the policeman Hey, did you order and, uh, these groceries here? Oh, hi there. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Yeah, these are your groceries. Have you got sir. everything I ordered? The, no, uh, uh, no. How about the parsley? No, we didn't have the parsley. Oh, you didn't have uh, the parsley. No, we brought some other stuff instead, though. Uh, what'd you bring instead? Well, let's see, I brought some uh, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Yes, and all I got right. some turnip greens. Turnip greens, I got yeah. some kale. Kale? Yes, we were having a big sale on kale. Oh, a big kale sale. You've heard about it. I've heard about it. Yes, indeed. Well, well I brought you a lot of that. Hey, listen, I was just talking about some of the people that lived around our neighborhood. And, you were? Uh, yeah. What'd as you say? long as you look uh, sort of like, uh, well, you know, a grocer, one of those people around the neighborhood, why, why don't we do that song about the people in your neighborhood? Well, I'd rather not, actually. Oh, come on. It's a nice song. Well, okay, but you I'll start off. All right, I'll start off. Well, now. Who are the people in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood? Say, who are the people in your neighborhood, the people that you meet each And we are back. Hey, Vicky Joy, Tuesday night. You know what that means. Tonight, Vicky Joy disappears as soon as I start talking to her. Folks, <clears throat> sometimes she does this. She will be back. Um, tonight is the night where we're talking about the different denominations of Satanism. Yeah, I told you she would be back, folks. There she is. Hey, Vicky. I like that shirt. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Do you like this? Pretty cool. It's so cool that I got one myself. Hey, special delivery <laughs> from Amazon. It's... From a good friend, a gift from a good friend. And Vicky is locked yes, up again, but yes. we can still see your shirt. Hey, there you are. Dude, can you see me? I don't know why I'm having issues today. Yeah, I got to back up so you can hey, see man, this. Maybe it's the subject matter. It could be. Bigfoot doesn't believe you either. So, uh, yeah. In uh, that's a cool gift from a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I love it. This was the uh, this, this was, was the, the consequence of, uh, of last week. Instead of Bigfoot pajamas, we wore Bigfoot shirts, right? So... Right. Okay. Anyway, did that little intro bring back any memories for you, Vic? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. And uh, Hey, that's okay. Vic is having some technical difficulties tonight. Vic, you're locking up on us if you can hear us. So uh, just yeah, hang in there and... Uh, uh, I just want to, this is what I want to do real quick, guys. We're going to get into some stuff tonight, but first thing first, I want to remind everybody that Vicki and I are going to be at the Hear the Watchmen conference in Louisville, uh, in just a few weeks. So there is a promo code. We're going to, I want to go ahead and play that video real quick. So this is a video that Mike, um, made for us, just kind of telling people about the conference, telling people about the promo code. If you are in the vicinity of Louisville, you know, all those cities I mentioned, uh, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Nashville, Lexington, uh, St. Louis, there's other cities out there. Come on out and join us in Louisville. But check out this, um, check out this little promo here, uh, real quick from uh, Mike Kerr, the guy putting on the conference down there in Louisville, spiritual warfare, tactical training, uh, super duper training. So, uh, if uh, if Katie's ready, go ahead.
Hey, through the Black family, it's Mike Kerr, founder of Here the Watchmen. Come on out, Louisville, Kentucky, October 14 through 16. See Tom and Vicki Joy and a whole host of other speakers that will teach you what you need to know about spiritual warfare. Use the promotional code TOM20. Save yourself $20 off that ticket price. Go to hearthewatchmen.com. Get signed up today. We'll see you in Louisville. Hey guys, still waiting on Vicky to get back in here. But um, so I don't know if anybody has seen, uh, saw the show last night. Uh, or some of the stuff that we've been doing, we have been covering a lot of different occultic type stuff. Okay, uh, we a couple of weeks ago, one of our first shows was on chaos magic, and we were um, just kind of explaining that to people that didn't know about chaos magic. Uh, just maybe never even heard of the term chaos magic. So um, anyway, uh, and then we talked about sigil magic. Those shows and a lot of everything that we're doing kind of ties in to the stuff that we're going to be talking about tonight. So, uh, Vic, we were showing off our new shirts, yeah. but uh, I just kind of, this is uh, uh, not relevant to anything, but I was cleaning out my closet earlier today. I, I don't know how I did it. You know, one minute I'm drinking a cup of coffee. Next thing I know, I'm like, man, I need to get rid of some of these shirts, you know. But oh, no. I don't know if it's like the same way for girls that it is for guys like sometimes you come across a shirt and you're like ah i'm not ready to let go of that yet you know so i did yeah. find i'll show i'll give you an example of a shirt that i found in my closet deep in the back okay. of the closet that i i was like i don't want to i don't want to get rid of this shirt yet so this is one i got uh quite a few years ago and uh, it's a political shirt so i want to warn anybody it i don't get offended, okay? I, I'm sorry if you do get offended, but this is a shirt that I used to sport quite a while ago. And here you go. It says, <laughs> I voted for Willie. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. And you know what? Um, out of the options that year, I still stand by my decision uh, of voting for Willie Nelson. So, um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Do you have any shirts like that you don't want to let go of? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, ones were like you couldn't fit back in them to save your life, but mm -hmm. you're keeping them. I, I just recently, you know, within the last year or two, started contemplating the T-shirt quilt concept. Ah, uh, I thought about doing that. Yeah. Finding someone who knows how to do that because heaven knows I'm not going to make my own. But but yeah, like there was a camp I used to do every year for many years. I would do the Johnny Erickson Tata, like her respite camps. And the shirts were just kind of notoriously kind of ugly and ill fitting. But I don't want to get rid of any of them because there's so many memories attached to all of them. And so I was thinking of like, well, maybe it's time for a T-shirt quilt. Hey, Vic, as long as we're talking about T-shirts, there could be some new listeners out there that don't know that Through the Black has its own line of T-shirts called Ezekiel 8. It's a true story, yes. okay? True story. So, and coincidentally, I happen to have some right here while awesome. we're talking about it. I'll show you a couple of them. We don't really plug our stuff enough, so I'm going to take a minute tonight. Yeah, if you go to throughtheblack.com, this is the shirt that says, I will fight for you. And then the our Ezekiel 8 uh, logo on the back. And here's another one, uh, Vic. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Love and it. And somewhere buried in here is this. Uh, man, I love, everybody knows me, knows I love the color blue. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if anybody can see this. It says, everything done in the dark will be brought to the light. And this is a hooded sweatshirt. Everybody's like, why didn't you get those in t-shirts? I don't know. Oh. Uh, maybe we will one day, but maybe. this is the front of that. This is uh, this is actually a pullover. I wish it was a zip up, but they didn't have them in zip up. Hmm. So, uh, but we do have some zip up uh, uh, hoodies with that as well. Thanks to everybody that's been buying those uh, those Ezekiel 8 shirts. Uh, helps us put fuel in the tank, that sort of thing. 
So, uh, and again, we will be down in Louisville with shirts and books in tow. So, um, looking forward to seeing everybody down there. But, um, Vic, I feel like I want to, um, I didn't prepare a, um, I didn't prepare a meme for tonight. So I feel like I should tell another, uh, like anecdotal story. Okay. And this is, this is a little bit relevant because right before I came on air, uh, I saw a friend of mine, he had, he had made a post about how he changed, uh, a light fixture in the dark. And it reminded me of a couple months ago when I changed a ceiling fan in the dark. Oh wow! On a bed. Oh, I was standing on. on a bed. That sounds like yeah. an injury waiting. To yeah. Happen. Well, I didn't get injured, but <laughs> let me tell you, it was hard. Um, <laughs> I, if I would have had to do it over, I would have moved the bed and moved the mattresses. But okay. I thought, nah, that's too much work. Well, let me tell you that changing a ceiling fan while you have your knees bended. And you're trying to balance on a bed that's really yeah. bouncy. Um, <laughs> and then you have your 15-year-old holding the flashlight. Like, I don't know if anybody knows nice. anything about kids and holding flashlights, but <laughs> it just, it, it brings out, yeah, it, it yeah. brings out a side of you that I don't like when that side come, of me comes yeah. out, you know? Yeah. So, but a that's a story a that I just thought of. A flashlight um, or a hose. Yeah. Yeah, or a hose. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, anyway, man. we have many hose stories in our family uh, oh, yeah. about the garden hose and, yeah, accident, <laughs> accidentally getting sprayed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I thought we would uh, lighten up the mood a little bit because we're talking about so much dark stuff. And, uh, folks, I don't blame you if you're not interested in this stuff. Now, a lot of people are. Um, our interest in it is exposing it, is is saving those who have been victimized, saving those who have been abused, saving those who are involved in it. We believe there is redemption uh, for everybody. And we believe in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So, um, and even as I'm saying right th that right now, we extend the truth of the gospel to the Satanists, to the occultists that may be out there listening tonight. Um, Vic, quick response. Like when I say Satanist, what's the first thing that pops into your head? I, I kind of think of like the fake ones, you know, like the high school heavy metal guys that like sneak around on the weekends under bridges and getting drunk and wearing their metal shirts. And, you know, um, I, I kind of digress immediately to the ones that kind of like the media gives attention to. And um, it really was only um, it, it wasn't until I, I met Russ that I really sort of figured out, oh, there's serious Satanists out there that like this is for real. The stereotypical Satanist, the ones that scare um, your soccer moms yeah. when you run into them at the McDonald's or something like that. They're like, exactly. Right. So yeah. those guys are out there and those guys are involved in Satanism and occult type things. And we take it seriously. So that's definitely going to fall under one of the categories that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, so. I, I kind of do the same thing, even though I know a lot about Satanism and Satanist and the different beliefs. Uh, for some reason, I go to that stereotype when I think mm -hmm. about a you know somebody. Yeah. And I think part of the reason is because um, the people, I think more than ever, there's recruiting among those types of people. Hmm. Now, historically, people that dress that way have not necessarily been Satanist. But more and more, people are okay identifying with Satanism. It used to be, you know, it used to be there. They had a defense like, "Hey, don't call us a Satanist just because we wear black T-shirts." Mm -hmm. Now it was. Now it's like, "Hey, hey, I just want you to know I'm a Satanist," and yeah. they don't really know anything about Satanism. A lot of them just bought a T-shirt from a Satanic T-shirt company, which there are some out there. Right. Or they became a member of uh, the Satanic Temple, which is probably one of the most commercial Satanic groups out there. Um, I would say even bigger than 
uh, the Church of Satan. It seems like, and that—that's just um, uh, maybe I'm judging them on PR ability. Okay, uh, the Church of Satan was not about taking anybody. They—they they wanted quality members. I think I could say that, um, but they would also take your hundred dollars and give you a card as well. So. Right. Right. It seems to be getting somewhat commercialized, you know, and especially, you know, with the Roe v. Wade overturned and, you know, the advertising like, you know, it, it, it's a religious right. It's a religious right. So join us and, you know, you pay your hundred bucks or whatever and you get your little your card. But but I, I think that, you know, the real ones, the underground ones, they're not recruiting. I mean, you got to be of the right bloodline. They're not out, you know, looking for new members in in, in that one, you know, and that, that, that's the group that scares me, Tom, like the, the people out there, you know, with their little websites and stuff kind of, you know, get an eye roll from me, but it, it it's those underground ones that, oof, you know, I, I would take right, them seriously. Right. I, I wouldn't you, be showing up in their backyard. You can't really get into that, those groups, if you no. want to. Now no. I, there is one testimony of a guy by the name of Zachary King that mm -hmm. I think he kind of recruited himself among Luciferians. It's like one of the only people that I've heard. He's got Ooh. an interesting testimony. But mm -hmm. so let's go ahead and jump into this. I have a slide. And if you go ahead and use the one that I that I corrected the spelling, um, well, it, it was probably – I'm going to blame uh, Spell Checker on that because <laughs> um, the original slide uh, – said uh four male types of satanism um mm. this one and i didn't even know that i had been using that slide there we go i changed it to there are four main types of satanism so and um i was explaining in my uh facebook video earlier that of course you know a satanist is going to watch this and they're just going to laugh they're going to be like no there's you know just like the gender people no there's there's, uh, you know, a hundred different, you know, genders are there's, you know, so we're talking about four categories of Satanism. Okay. And right. yeah, there can be more, but we don't yeah. got all night folks. Um, <laughs> we, we have other things we got to do. So we're going to talk about atheistic Satanist, theistic Satanist, experimenters. Okay. And there's a, there's, I learned to use that word experimenter. And then undergrounders, Luciferians. Okay. So, uh, and, and keep that, um, go ahead and keep that slide handy just in case I forget where I'm at. <laughs> but, um, so Vic, last night we talked about a, a famous theistic Satanist, Aleister Crowley, and yep. a famous uh, atheistic Satanist, Anton LaVey. Now, yeah. keep in mind that the these satanist um they're liars and right. they um they brag about breaking you know the 10 commandments one of those being thou shall not lie so they don't care about the truth they don't care about uh lying so how can we trust them at their word well uh you know a lot of times we can't okay um we have to kind of weigh out the evidence and we kind of have to see their behavior for example, um, Aleister Crowley, he practiced magic. He was involved in, uh, you know, uh, ritualistic magic, the summoning of demons. He said he wanted to be the devil's chief of staff. Uh, he claimed belief pretty much in Satan, and he had no problem saying that, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are people, um, modern-day uh, Satanists, okay, Uh that are that are out there that are what we call theistic satanists okay now uh the first one on the list though is atheistic satanists we're going to come back to that okay we're going to come back to the theistic satanists the atheistic satanist uh we mentioned this last night when i found out that satanist i was watching interviews with probably Zena levey and maybe some old interviews or reading some stuff about anton levey they claimed that they didn't believe in the devil or God, right. that it was just an archetype, right? Yeah. So, Vic, what did you think when you when you learned that? 
So it kind of makes sense because, so I think it's like, there's, there's no actual being that's, that's God or Satan, but there is a God. It's the Satanist. You're the God. And so many of these, I think one of the things that whether it's theistic or atheistic or Luciferian or many of these categories of Satanism, it's, it's various types of self actualization and God is self and self fulfillment and self, um, you know, Eh, the light and the dark and knowledge and secret knowledge and esoteric knowledge. And I mean, a lot of it then ties into even new age and the whole Buddhist stuff and Ascension doctrine, which is now big on Gaia.com. All of the Ascension doctrine stuff is just the repackaged new age, repackaged Buddhism. And there's so many similarities between all of them, which is why we we're talking yesterday about Zena Shrek, uh, LeVay's daughter, when she left the Church of Satan for a while, I don't know if she's currently there, she went in to, to Berlin and joined some sort of Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist sort of religion. And it's really kind of six of one, half a dozen of another, really. I mean, there's little differences, kind of the similar like, okay, there's differences between Catholicism and Christianity. There's difference between Lutheran and Baptist, right? But you've got some of those basic foundational similarities where you're all going to get along. And I, I it's just the more I study Ascension doctrine, the more it all comes down to this self-actualization, Christ consciousness. You are the self. You can be as a God. And it just goes all the way back to the garden, the original lie that if you taste of the fruit, you will be as a God. It's the same, same serpent, same lie. Basically, they yeah. just have a bunch of different, you know, packages you can choose from depending, you know, it's their little a la carte menu, depending on which, you know, we were talking about the Wiccans a few weeks ago where it's right. kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to pin it down because it's kind of like the only rule is there's no rules. You get to pick your own religion basically. So this, this is from the church of Satan <clears throat> website, which was, the organization of Anton LaVey. Now, when Anton LaVey died, uh, all his children and grandchildren fought over the ownership, the rights to the Church of Satan. And mm. there are claims, they're, they're like the new Church of Satan, the Church of Satan, the old Church of Satan, okay? The, uh, and they're fighting over, you know, the power of the Church of Satan. So that's one thing that's, uh, that's causing them struggle. But the highlighted area here, it says... Since the Satanists understand that all gods are fiction, instead of bending a knee in worship to or seeking friendship or unity with such mythical entities, he places himself as the center of his own subjective universe, as his own highest value. We Satanists are thus our own gods. So, there's, there's so much, um, you know inconsistencies in what they teach okay this takes me back to when we were talking about chaos magic okay anything goes right right and uh they make up their own rules as they go uh we don't believe in god we don't believe in satan hey we are we are um we are god hey uh the church should be thanking satan because uh he's kept us in business all you know for hundreds of years you know mm. And so on and so forth. Hey, I don't believe in anything out there. Okay. An, an atheist, an atheist, okay. Different, you know, different than an agnostic. An agnostic says there might be something out there, but I don't know. Um, uh, atheist says there's absolutely nothing out there. Doing rituals. What is answering the rituals? Who are right. you summoning? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. the modern day. Church of Satan would be the Satanic Temple. All right. Now, the Satanic Temple, even in their um, in their writings on their website, they disavow the Church of Satan. They say the Church of Satan was too theistic for an atheistic organization, or I don't want to say theistic, but they believed in supernatural things. Right. The 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 satanic temple claims that they are true, true atheists, but there are plenty and they accept them with open arms, theistic Satanist within their ranks. 
Um, and I've seen the contradictions on the back of so many um, cars in the form of bumper stickers where you have a satanic temple sticker and you have a theistic or a ritualistic satanic sigil, you know, <laughs> on the other side and a satanic temple on one side. I'm like, these guys don't even know what they believe. They just <laughs> want to hate God. They, and you know what? It goes back to something I said last night. They think they're having better sex. Right. I, I they, think that's, they really think, a lot of them think that's what's offered. So I was, I was just going to say, rebellion is cool. Rebellion's in vogue. So anything that like looks rebellious, looks edgy, makes you look cool, you know, so... Uh, you know, you got the bumper stickers, you got the t-shirts, like they got all the cool t-shirts and the jewelry and their little symbols and everything. And it, it looks bad, you know, but it, there's not a lot of understanding what a lot of those symbols mean. You could say the same thing for Christians. There's a lot of our, our symbols that have been hacked and hijacked and don't mean what we think they do either. But, but it, it is, it is interesting. And then you've got the whole, uh, the layers of, like you were saying earlier, you know, they're always online and in the media saying what they do and don't believe. And they're always debunking these stereotypes. And there's there's no SRA and we, we don't hurt children and we don't do that. You know, you know, and and the fact is, is that true or is that just the persona? You know, there's enough there, there's enough of a protective covering in the media where they're not going to give these people bad advertising, you know. And the cops and, you know, all the satanic crimes. I mean, a lot of the crimes that we hear about on the news, we don't hear the satanic aspects of those crimes. Those those details are are covered up. So is it a cover up in some cases? Is it also the case where lower initiate a lower initiates truly think that they're just part of this feel good group and they have no idea what's going on in the upper echelons of of their own religion? Um, I mean, there's just so many layers i don't even think that if you got inside the door you'd really get to the bottom of the truth wow i mean could you imagine being a satanist you couldn't <laughs> trust a single brother you know what i'm oh, saying oh gosh. because their whole everything is based on hey we're rejecting everything that is good we're rejecting everything that is righteous i say righteousness is the new rebellion okay yeah. righteousness telling the truth walking with god it really is it used to be sex drugs and rock and roll but now it's uh walking upright okay um yeah anyway so um the atheistic satanist have you know for the longest time uh satanic bible published in 1969 i believe and um that you know that book was basically you know their bible okay and again do i trust him do i trust anton levey uh well he's not here anymore but no i don't i don't trust him and i don't trust what he said and no, he, um even even his biographers a lot of biographers make it clear that things that Leve stated in his own life about his own life that there's no verification for it. A lot of things were exaggerated and celebrities he dated and things like that. And so even his own biographers don't trust a lot of what he said. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, no doubt he was he was not trustworthy. No doubt the dude was a punk. What you know, whatever. <laughs> um so and he was able to fool a lot of people, okay. He had a shtick. Uh, was he doing human and animal sacrifices? He could have. I don't know. It wouldn't shock me. It yeah. wouldn't shock me if it, if somebody came out and blew the whistle on Anton LaVey and said he was involved in that type of Satanism. I don't know that he was, but uh, he very well could have been. Now, I do believe that his... Um, his former colleague, Michael Aquino, was involved in that. And he was involved in the abuse of kids. And he was involved in uh, mind control. And a lot of sick stuff. Just because the overwhelming amount of witnesses 
that have come out, come forward and blew the whistle on this guy. Mm. So um, we're not really talking about Aquino. We haven't talked about him. Um, he is definitely a player in this. And um, he actually started out with LeVay. Okay. Then he broke off with from him and started the Temple of Set there in San Francisco. Okay. And, of course, lots of accusations about Aquino. Um, he made it clear that he believed, you know, in Satan and worshiped Satan. So, um, and as we said last night, uh, LeVay's daughter uh, left the Church of Satan and joined the Temple of Set at one point. Mm, so, yeah. and far as I know, from what I understand, she's not with either one now. Like you said, maybe, uh, you know, uh, involved in Buddhism now. You know, um, I pray in Jesus' name that she gets saved, that she finds salvation. She has had a life of hell on earth. Mm. And uh, uh, what do you do when you're the daughter of Anton LaVey? Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. my um, my grandpa, my mom had a saying like, man, they never had a chance. Mm. They never had a chance. Well, I would say, um, I would say Jesus Christ is your chance. And there, there is a chance if you turn to him, if you repent and you renounce, uh, God can save you. He can break all the curses and cast out all the demonic presence and set you free. So um, anyway, moving, um, moving up on the list, uh, Vic, is the um, theistic Satanist, okay? And theistic Satanism, which... In a way, even though LeVay claimed that he was atheistic, he lived like a theistic Satanist, like he believed in the supernatural because he did rituals, okay? He took um, credit for um, for what happened to uh, Jane Mansfield and her boyfriend, okay? He mm -hmm. took credit for that. And folks, okay, yes, I know she didn't get decapitated. Let's not get, let's not get into that again. So, um, and... You know what? Um, no, I, I appreciate somebody bringing that up last night because that's probably one of the first things I heard about Jane Mansfield. And from what we understand, when you look a little bit deeper, that is true. She didn't get decapitated. Um, I, I heard that, man, it, it did a lot of damage, though. I mean, regardless, she's dead. And I heard mm -hmm. that um, that it almost took her head off. So, uh, again. I don't know. I couldn't. I uh, I could be wrong about that. You know, when I was out in California, um, I was out there hanging out with Greg Reed. We were filming the uh, some uh, interviews for Detestable. Uh, him and I went out to eat. We were walking around Hollywood Boulevard and Sunset Boulevard, and there was a window up where these people were trying to raise money. What? Who's? I, they were trying to buy some cars, like the car that Jane Mansfield was killed in. And also the car that maybe um, James Dean was killed in. So okay. random thought that I thought about. So mm -hmm. Crowley made no bones about it. He believed in the devil. He worshiped the devil. He served the devil. And he did rituals. He believed he was in contact with something supernatural. He wrote, you know, all of these books. Um, I think uh, LaVey would have no problem of being called more of a humanist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but again, was it a cover up? I don't know. So Crowley, uh, just uh, obviously do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Um, wow. That's uh, that's Satan's slogan of the year. That could be if he was running for the for president, you know, um, that would that would be it. Right. Yeah. No kidding. So yeah, it's it's interesting all these little splinter groups and not even just in Satanism, you see it in Christianity, you even see it in Mormonism. There's the, these people that become like prominent religious leaders who kind of become icons of the culture for starting these religions. A lot of times if you go back far enough into their upbringing, many of them started in the Christian church. And they started to kind of pick and choose the things that they liked and they didn't like so that got them kicked out. And so then they kind of went to like the next best thing that kind of fit them. But then eventually they got kicked out of that. And and all of these splinters that that come off. I mean, uh, Bailey, 
um, when we talked about Alice Bailey, she was in the Theosophical Society, but they eventually kind of got booted out of that. Her and her husband got booted out of that. So they kind of started their own thing. And, you know, the same thing with uh, uh, LaVey and even, even uh, Crowley was kind of, he was in one of the secret societies and got booted out. And so then he started the OTO and it, so it, it's interesting that um, you, you see this a lot, that a lot of these religions are invented as people start to, the foundation is the Bible. They start there. And then as they start kind of picking and choosing the things that they like and don't like, that kind of moves them further and further down the line. It's this downward spiral for, for a lot of them. Um, but it, it's interesting to me that in, I would think that in, in, in the satanic circles, that kind of the more someone in your parish, so to speak, was a troublemaker, the more you should sort of respect and be in awe of them, right? I mean, if the whole thing is do whatever you want and it's all about pleasure and it's all about yourself and um, then I, I don't see why they would ever kick anybody out. Cause I would think that the more troublesome a person was, the more they should be, you know, promoted rather than booted out. So a little bit of hypocrisy there, I guess. Yeah. You know, um, Anton LaVey, he had a, um, a sigil that was, um, he customized of a pentagram that had a lightning bolt in it. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. It was, the, a, it was an inverted pentagram death. with a lightning bolt in it. And from what I understand, he took that lightning bolt from the verse in um, in uh, Luke chapter 10, where it says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Mm -hmm. OK, um, that's not that's not anything to celebrate. OK, <laughs> yeah. God backhanded him out of heaven. He got his butt kicked and that's who your hero is. Right. Yeah. So um, that's that's who your icon is the you know your your symbol of of lightning is a symbol of defeat yeah and i don't get i mean everything they they pull like i like you've been saying they pull from the word of god okay uh but they pull what they want they don't pull the truth okay yeah. they would know that um he he's been cast down you know you read in isaiah okay um and uh we, you know, look at the book of Revelation, look how it ends, okay, for your hero, for your archetype. Um, they don't like talking about that part. So anyway, yeah. um, uh, uh, I'll give you an example. And I, I don't mention this, uh, this person. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this person on the air before, uh, just because I don't want to give them any more um, um, publicity. Mm -hmm. But there's a guy out there that has a website called Become a Living God, okay? His name is E.A. EA Coetting, and he does a lot of um, uh, satanic rituals. He talks about becoming possessed by demons and, and invoking demons to possess him and rituals and things like this. Uh, you know, Russ and I, we had a few conversations about this guy, just really concerned for him. Uh, we just... Uh, I, you know, it's like watching a train wreck, you know, uh, it's not going to end good for him. Uh, we really believe it's going to, unless he turns around and he gets out of there and repents, turns his life over to God, he's going to end up, uh, in a same, uh, a similar situation like Crowley did. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, an another group out there is, uh, a group that you guys heard Russ talk about. And I just came across these guys. Uh, their, their social media recently, it's a group called the Cathedral of the Black Goat. Okay. And Ooh. this is a, this is a, a satanic group, a, a theistic satanic group. Okay. Now, um, again, doing rituals, doing rituals in the name of Satan. Uh, I'm sure there's probably hundreds. Okay. Uh, we're not even talking about the, um, What's the Church of the Final Judgment that um, the Son of Sam was involved in? Um, somebody will think of it. James, James, if James was in here, he would say. Um, <laughs> exactly. He's uh, Process Church. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, the Process Church, which is basically a satanic church, right? Um, 
a satanic church that m mixes Christianity with Satanism, which is really weird. Uh, connected, you know, also connected with uh, uh, Charles Manson hmm. was connected to the Process Church. So we can see how drugs, you know what I'm saying, play <laughs> yeah. into a lot of these things, right? You know, take a look at um, uh, L. Ron Hubbard. Drugs played into, you know, the things that he was involved in. He, he was connected. He was involved in black magic, mm -hmm. okay? But he created his own form of, um, I don't think it's right to call it Satanism, but he created his own cult, right? Right. Um, now, I mean, let's speak. Let's be clear, okay? Um, as Christians, we believe you're either for God or you're against him, okay? So if you're not a Christian, it doesn't mean that you're a Satanist, but you are on the devil's side. I don't care if you are, um, you know, uh, a Church of Satan, Satanic Temple, Luciferian, okay? Um, if you're part of the cult of Cthulhu, whatever. There's a there's a satanic group out there, okay, connected with that. And um, or you're a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness. It's a cult. You're mm -hmm. deceived by the enemy. So right, right. Well, and even I don't know. <laughs> even just the again, they get everything from the scripture, but even the whole sheep and the goats. And so, you know, you've got the whole goat um they've embraced that imagery as as well as the lightning bolt so they, they take all of these sort of uh uh satanic symbols that originate in scripture and so it's not that they've originated it it's that they have embraced it and glorified it but even a lot of their symbols are originating from concepts or verses in scripture such as the lightning bolt and the goat and even as um azazel like the scapegoat and the red string and you've got, you know, religions with, you know, the red strings and bracelets and stuff. And they claim it has nothing to do with that verse. And okay. So it, it's just a bizarre coincidence that you're running around with red, red strings on just like the scapegoat, you know, whatever. Right. Right. I like what Jason says here. Progressive Christianity is also a satanic church leading many uh, to the lake of fire. So, Amen. um, Hey, I can't disagree with that. Um, Me neither. Uh, they, they're definitely not Christians. They've rejected the truth of the word of God. And I would also say uh, a group like Westboro Baptist Church has rejected the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And when I see a group like the Satanic Temple attack the Westboro Baptist Church, I, I, all I see is cults fighting each other. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's that's nothing on me. Obviously, I don't like it when people throw me, you know, into that group, you know, uh, that, hey, you're a Christian, so you must be like the Westboro Baptist Church. Uh, no, that's a cult that has absolutely nothing to do with true Christianity um, yeah. anyway. Yeah. And so. the whole the whole humanitarian gospel, too. I mean, a lot of the big mega churches are kind of embracing this. And, you know, it, it does say in Scripture that, you know, if you go into a place and someone's starving to death or they're naked and they're cold, like don't just preach the gospel to them, like give them the cup of water and feed them and clothe them and then preach the gospel. But even that verse is kind of getting distorted and we've kind of got this like Bono humanitarian sort of Christianity coming in where, you know, we've got all of these things that facilitate things that Jesus would approve of, you know, helping the poor and all these projects and, and these things. But there's no gospel being preached or it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the, here's your cup of cold water. You know, here's your rent money. Come join our church, but we're not ever going to tell you that you're a sinner and you need to repent and that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Genesis P. Orridge. Remember that person? No, no. Well, well, Hey, if you ever get bored on a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> type that into a search engine and have some fun. Oh, so, wow. yeah. Uh, was also involved in the process church, Audrey um, saying there. So, yeah, anyway. So, moving right along. And we can come back and talk about any of these, Vic, as we kind of lay these out there. Sure. But um, now, I used to call this next group dabblers, Okay. And I learned from um, Dale Griffiths that the word dabble is just, uh, it's too safe of a word to describe these guys, okay? Yeah. 
and uh, he liked to call them experimenters. All right. Um, Self-styled Satanist would be another way of describing these guys here. Now, um, a person that that um, falls into this category of self-styled styled Satanist, these guys are dangerous, okay? Uh, it would be um, the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, okay? Um, would be, remember Sean Sellers, the yeah. Satanist that killed the convenience store clerk and then he killed his, uh, I think he killed his mom and stepdad. Yeah, I think he had a book because I think I read that book in the college. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So those are examples of self-styled or experimenters, okay? Mm -hmm. These are the kids that you see at the mall, okay? Um, there was a case, I should have brought it up for uh, Katie. It was out in Kansas. A couple lured a girl. I use this as an example um, a lot of times. Um, a couple um, lured a girl, a lonely girl, into the woods out in Missouri, actually. Uh, and they killed her. Do you remember this story, Vic? Vaguely, this, yeah. These were self-styled Satanists, okay? Yes. Um, there were two girls up in Milwaukee, I think, that lured a guy up from Texas with the promise of sex, and they began torturing him, mm. and he escaped out the window. They started cutting him up. So um, yeah. that's an example of self-styled Satanist. The the sad thing, too, about the self-styled is it... it... <laughs> They're just the cannon fodder. You know what I mean? They're never going to get mm -hmm. high up and be anything important. They're like the cannon fodder. They're the naive people that they they get drawn in because of some sort of need is being met, you know, whether or not they're like they're outcasts and they're getting accepted here or or you know, it's a it's a persona, you know, because they're being bullied or whatever's drawing them in and they're so dedicated, you know, they're buying all the books and they're, they're, they're doing all the rituals and they're like, they're, they're dedicated to this. They're doing everything that they can to pursue this. And a lot of these ones that, that wind up going out, like they heard the voice, you know, and they went out and they killed their parents or, you know, the, the slender man girls or, you know, whatever. It It's so sad. A lot of these, a lot of these kids wind up in prison the rest of their life with their families dead and, you know, Satan's done nothing to help them. The, 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 the members of the church aren't there visiting them in, in prison and, you know, all this, this, their whole lives are just forfeit. And I've just, I've always been intrigued with those Sean Sellers. And I've read a lot of those types of books because I just feel like we're all kind of just a series of really stupid decisions away from doing that. Like all of us, like every time Mm -hmm. We sin. We think, oh, it's not a big deal. And I'll just ask for forgiveness tomorrow and no one's going to know and it's not hurting anybody. And we just take these things very lightly. But, you know, one bad decision, like one stupid decision to like, I'm just going to go out tonight to the liquor store, like the chain reaction that could be set off by just one stupid decision. And I'm not even talking about the experimenters. I'm even talking Christians, like how many people's lives just change course because we don't think that one act of rebellion is because Jesus is going to come and forgive us the next day. It's going to be okay. You know, we'll set the balances right tomorrow. And this cavalier attitude towards it. And I, I just have genuine amounts of empathy for these kids that wind up in in their teenage years or their early twenties rotting in a prison cell the rest of their life because they were duped into this stuff. You know what I do as well. Um, <laughs> and Satanist across all categories, the, the, the guy that I met a couple weeks ago when I went down to Troy, Ohio, he was a, um, a theistic Satanist and he, he had no problem explaining that to me. He knew about it. He had a, a neck full of sigils, okay, that uh, he believed brought him power and protection, all right? Mm -hmm. And he, who who knows how he started out, okay? I don't know if he dove right into the deep end or if he got an interest through music or something else. Um, uh, it was, I didn't really get to ask him, you know, that much except for I do know uh, that he told me that um, there was a, a broken relationship with his parents. 
And I think he was rebelling against his parents' belief system, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, I my heart was broken for him, okay? He was looking for something to fill the void, and some people had let him down, or he felt that some people had let, let him down, and it pushed him over the edge, you know, to yeah. where he's at now. Same thing happens with a lot of teens. Um, we can probably you know, look at these teens, and I don't want to generalize, Vic, but I want to get your response. Uh, a lot of these guys, not, say, not saying that, it, that it's uh, everyone, okay? We're not generalizing. But there's a lot of people that are into metal music, that are into the goth culture. I don't really like using that, but that's what people understand. We never called it that when I was a kid. Right. Um, but... Um, there's a lot of people that are into that, but throw another ingredient in there. Missing father. Mm. Okay. And that's an ingredient. And then we could throw a couple other ingredients in there. Abuse. Okay. Throw some more stuff in there. Neglect. Okay. Uh, you know, just some different social uh, dynamics that could create, you know, just the perfect recipe for, you know, one of these guys to, to break the law, to do something. Okay. Um, it's no excuse. And we, you know, um, by no means are we defending any of these people that commit crimes that kill anybody that the things that are the people that have done these horrific things, but, um, there, uh, you know, I do believe in uh, cause and effect, yeah. but I mean, what do you think about what I'm mentioning? You know, just, uh, when you throw, especially when you throw that ingredient in there, missing father. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think what is what's tragic is a lot of times these dysfunctional homes where there's an absent parent or there's some abuse or there's some addiction. At least up until recently, this was a Christian nation. A lot of these dysfunctional homes were people that went to church every Sunday. So you got a young developing mind where there is this complete contradiction going on in your household. You're seeing the mom and dad on Sunday morning that put on this persona in the pews. And then you see the mom and dad that are at home screaming and fighting at each other and, and cheating on each other and drinking and, you know, all this stuff. And I, it's, it's no wonder. And I mean, many of the people we've already talked about, Alice Bailey was raised in a Christian home, even up into her, early life was doing mission trips overseas and teaching Sunday school and married a pastor. And Crowley was raised in a Christian home. And uh, it, it I'm, I'm thinking also of, um, cause you, you brought the music culture when, when we're young and we just, we fixate on a musician or a band that we like, you know, remember what it's like to be 13, 14, those guys are cool. You know, your parents aren't cool. These guys are so cool, you know, and you're so influenced as a kid. So everything that comes out of their mouth, even if it's utter stupidity, it just looks so cool when they're saying it, you know, and every book they talk about, you're running to the library and getting and every other, every band that influenced them, you're going out and you're buying those albums. And you know, and so I'm just kind of thinking right now of like, uh, you know, a big influence when I was a kid was Metallica and uh, the lead singer. He was raised in a broken home. So he, he and his siblings lived with his mother and the mother got cancer and they were Christian scientists. And so it wasn't just that she couldn't go and get treatment. You couldn't even acknowledge that you were sick because that would, you know, you'd be speaking it into the ether and, you know, you can't even acknowledge it. And so there was never even closure like, mom, I'm going to miss you when you're gone. Or I love you. Know, you couldn't ever even talk about it. And, you know, um, not only did that play out in his life, but it played out in his lyrics and it played out then into the homes of a lot of young people and a lot of young people who went to church. And then all of a sudden they're hearing this, this other idea of, you know, yeah, God, you know, God, God could have saved his mom and God could have done that. And, you know, you take on that, that anger and that angst and that hurt because you, this is someone who you admire. And <clears throat> so it's almost like this, like, 
repeating pattern, you know, you know what I mean? And it, it just seems like the, the tragedy is that so many people, especially when you're young, we cannot differentiate the difference between Christians failing to understand and explain and model and emulate Christianity. We can't differentiate that failing between God himself failing. And so when we, when we see the system breaking down, it, I don't understand because we're an intelligent group of people. Like human beings are very intelligent. And like, you know, if, it, it, if my dentist, you know, murdered his wife, I wouldn't carry this idea for the rest of my life that all dentists are murderers. You know what I mean? So I don't understand the breakdown that people who abuse and misunderstand the tenets of Christianity, that, that God who's, perfect and transcends that failure gets gets the 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 rap for that i think the devil is in the details i you know and it's um i what you're saying is, is good what i mean is why does this happen i think the devil is in the details and then it's also our human nature to fight against god and mm -hmm. to try to become our own god you know yeah um, oh yeah oh yeah so, yeah, I, I mean, I like that illustration. Why, you know, if, if, if a dentist or a doctor, you know, uh, commits murder, then do we mistrust? Man, maybe that's a bad, maybe that's a bad example. <laughs> I don't trust a lot of doctors. <laughs> so, um, never mind. Mm -hmm. So, okay. You get the idea. Uh, I like what, uh, what Bobby said here. The music understood you. Your parents did it. Yeah. So that was a great recruiting, you know, method. Uh, mm -hmm. It made me think of a story that I know um, of, uh, of, of somebody, a um, friend of mine's brother uh, from a long time ago, um, got beat up really bad. They were in um, down in California somewhere and they got beat up by a group of Latinos. Okay. Um, so put in the hospital. Who showed up in the hospital to comfort this person, to help this person, were skinheads. Hmm. So they were the ones that helped him, that took care of him. And naturally, this person became a skinhead because right. they showed him uh, love. They gave him family. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's an extreme example kind of of what Bobby just said. But we feel that, you know what, we feel that community and you and I kind of understand that metal family type thing. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, my friend, Pastor Bob, he kind of gets it. He has a website. He's a Christian. He has a website. And the name of the website is wearemetalwearefamily.com. Hmm. Okay. And it's a Christian website. It's his church, Sanctuary Church. Wow. So um, anyway... I remember in um, in high school, we uh, I was involved with a group called Youth for Christ, and we uh, it was kind of a cool group. I mean, you know, this is a nationwide group. A lot of you guys have heard of it, and they came to my town, and uh, I was I was a very well known Christian in my high school, so uh, they got me connected with the Youth for Christ guy, and I started working with them, and they would use me to get people to come to their meetings, right? So uh, every Monday night at 728, that's when the meeting was, not 730, not 7 <laughs> o'clock, 728 was when the meeting started. And we got a lot of people to go to those meetings. And I remember there was this one guy um, that we got to go. I was, I was good friends with his sister, and they would come with me. I would pick them up sometime. And they came to the Youth for Christ meetings. Now, I don't know what happened. But a few years after high school, this person that I took to the Youth for Christ meetings, he um, started his own occult bookstore here in my town of Mansfield. Huh. It was called Culture, spelled Culture, spelled with a K. Okay. So uh, signifying, you know, that he knows the significance of the letter K. All right. Um, and it, it was here for a very, very long time. Uh, I remember I went in there one time 
and there was everything you need to become a Satanist to be, you know what I mean? Wow. Uh, lectures, uh, personal artifacts from the Church of Satan and and CDs from Anton LaVey, music that he made and, you know, things like this and, you know, all kinds of occult books and, and, and everything. So um, anyway, what, I mean, what happened to that guy? I don't know. Um, I do know that um, that somebody had prayed with him mm -hmm. and uh, he made a confession of faith. I don't know what happened after that. So um, anyway... We, we could go on and talk about these groups and we're kind of setting it up, setting it up because we're going to be talking about these groups in the weeks to come and for the rest of the year. And this is hopefully foundational for you guys. Uh, I've talked about this in some of my talks before. Speaking of which, I am going to be in Pennsylvania at the end of October out there in the Millersburg area, I think, but it's going to be a Coach Dave thing. So if anybody goes to Coach Dave's website, you can look it up there. Um and we're going to be out there. I'm going to be talking about satanic ritual abuse, satanic covens, all of that stuff. They asked me to come out there and talk. So uh, that's happening. Um, if you're in Pennsylvania, there we go. PA Spiritual Warfare Huddle. And does it say anything else there? Um, oh, hey, cool. They actually got the good picture. So, um, and <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, Bobby, uh, asked me to talk about, uh, satanic ritual abuse and satanic covens and stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing in Pennsylvania. But anyway, let's, let's go ahead and get to the last one. Um, and this is the category of generational Satanist. Uh, Russ called them the undergrounders, Luciferians. Okay. These are the guys that are um, at the top of the food chain, so to speak. Okay? The real These deal. are the ones that you could never pick out of a you know pick out of a police lineup, okay? As I often say, they look like Leave it to Beaver, okay? They yeah. look like the Cleavers. You're not going to be able to recognize them. They probably go to church, okay? Yeah, you're probably um, friends with one. Yes, they are masters at cover up. They are masters at deception. What I wish I had the quote, uh, the law of the Luciferian. I wish I had that quote here um, at my fingertips, but I don't. That's what um, tomorrow's guarantee that we're still here is today's perception that we don't exist. I got that a little bit. Okay, that's from Greg Reed, um, the law of the Luciferian. So basically, the undergrounders, the generational Satanists, the people that have passed down this religion from one generation to the next, 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 okay? Till we are here today, they've kept this secret, all right? Um, that's who we're talking about now. These are the ones that we hear the testimonies of the human sacrifice. We hear just the horror stories of people coming out of these cults, of these families, of people uh, suffering from severe sexual abuse from their own parents, from their own father, from their own mother, okay? Um, look at the testimony of Jay Parker. Um, wow, what a, what a, um, just a, a, a testimony that will shake you. I wonder if anybody's heard that testimony. Mm -hmm. I, I've listened to it so many times. And he, uh, man, he told about his family, his mother and father, and how cold they were and how they tortured him and abused him. And he said his mother was worse than his father mm -hmm. because he felt his mother hated him. Mm -hmm. And he just tried to rebel against them from a very young age and resist that satanic family. Mm -hmm. He said he lost respect for the church because they would go to church every um, every Sunday in a town outside of Philadelphia, okay, over close to Maryland. Um, and he said he saw the pastor shake his dad's hand, hand one time and said, man, I wish we had more people like you around here. Mm -hmm. And they would go from that church to the satanic church where he would be severely abused, 
tortured, raped. Okay, that's just one example. Of course, we know uh, about the Hampstead case. Okay, uh, we've been exposing that for years. We know about the uh, Blue House in Evansville, Indiana. Okay, we know about the preschool, the McMartin preschool case. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, in Manhattan Beach, California. Uh, just so many cases. Uh, cases that Russ was working on when uh, we passed numerous cases. Every time I talked to Russ, he would brief me on a new case, on a new email, on something mm -hmm. that he got. He couldn't keep up with it, okay? No. Um, I get cases. I get people calling me. People want verification. People want information, okay? Um, now, this is what... This falls under the category of satanic panic because so many people were coming forward and they were testifying about these satanic groups. And they were they were saying, we can't find any evidence. We can't find any evidence. Vicki, right down the road from me, a church that I passed several times a week had a story in, in the 90s, okay? Um, it's a, a matter of fact, it's a Presbyterian church. The same denomination, I don't know if this has any connection, I don't think it does, that Jay Parker, who I was just talking about, the mm. church that he went to in outside of Philadelphia, um, it was it was uh, the biggest news story in Mansfield for months, okay? These children were um, sexually abused. They were uh, made to say chants. They were, um, what are we reading here? Men uh, convicted of uh, raping children in 1992 will spend seven more years in prison. Yeah, this is an example. Could you blow that up for me? So um, this is one of the guys here, uh, Scott Butner, 43. And he was, um, he was sentenced when he was a teenager. So uh, I personally, I believe that they use these kids as scapegoats. They were mm. teenagers, okay? And the teenagers got sentenced to uh, like 20 years in prison. Uh, one of them got out and then ended up going back in. Uh, this case, as far as I'm concerned, is still open. Uh, I got a lead in the case a, a couple years ago. But mm -hmm. I'm looking for more whistleblowers. So if there's anybody from Mansfield that wants to talk about this case, please send us an email at throughtheblack.connectedoutlook.com. Um and uh, we want to talk to you about this case. Anyway, Vic, uh, mm -hmm. I'm talking about this case down the road. These children, okay, in Mansfield, Ohio, were saying the same things that children in California were saying with no ability to network, saying the same things that children in the UK and in Australia were saying with no ability to email each other, okay, back in the 90s and earlier, okay? <laughs> We yeah. hear these testimonies. So, and um, the FBI claims they got tens of thousands of phone calls and leads of these things happening, but they couldn't find any evidence. Well, doesn't tens mm. of thousands of people calling in, isn't that the evidence? Yeah. So anyway, they say it was a panic. I say that satanic panic was a great, great PR tool or a great cover-up tool, just like conspiracy theory. So anyway, I'm Ben Blavin. I want you to go. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's so tough too. And I mean, we learned this from Hampstead. It, even when you read about these cases in the news, you know that they're covering up for the, the real bad guys. So the people that are going to prison are, are usually, well, I shouldn't say usually, you never know with the media if the guys that actually went to prison were the ones actually doing this stuff or not, you know, because we know from our friends over in the UK that a lot of times the people in prison aren't really the ones that are, are the abusers. But um, I did have a, a link, Katie, that I sent, if you want to put it up. This is just a little um, thing supposedly written, Tom, by a generational Satanist. And Take it with a grain of salt because, you know, whether or not they're mm -hmm. disclosing what's true or not. But this will at least give you a picture into the mind of someone who is in this this lifestyle. And at least this is what they feel 
this is what this is their perspective of what's going on and what they can reveal. So bear with me here because my eyes are not that great. I'm going to read it on my phone here. Generational Satanism, what is it? This is a subject in the left-hand path whose time has come. First, to be able to freely discuss an esoteric subject, both as this could only be done by one whom has been an actual member of a generational family that is a part of the secret network of such families with which we call generational Satanists. These secret old blood families are what has come to be called the Brotherhood of Shadows and Darkness, the Brotherhood of the Serpent, or more simply, the Brotherhood. Do we really exist? The answer is yes. And so I don't know if you want to go on and read the whole thing, Tom. It it might be worthy of it. I might sure. I might ask you to help out just because my eyes are yeah, so yeah. watery from this cold. Yeah, let me let me read on here. Uh, the answer is yes. Generational Satanists move in hidden and mysterious ways, and we like to remain behind the scenes in most cases. That is a common knowledge that the old bloodlines have many skeletons in their family closets that they want to remain there, and they, and excuse me, they want to remain there and away from prying eyes uh, is a matter of fact, not fiction. I was first conscious consecrated and ordained a high priest in the brotherhood meaning generational satanism by my grandmother who was who made sure that i was initiated and ordained on the oldest site in the countryside where i grew up it was on the site where the first log cabin in the early country stood and on the bank of the dupage uh, river lately i was encouraged to form a satanist coven that was secretly backed by the brotherhood known as the Le, the Le Diab, Diable Coven. Uh, this was the one, this was the only generational Satanist coven in northwestern Illinois at the time that was sanctioned by Moriah or the Secret Council of Generational Satanists and its hereditary bloodlines. In the Midwest, the old Templar, did I I didn't skip a line. In the Midwest, the Old Templar and Free Masonic influences abound true generational Satanists. And this is where much of our ancient landmarks come from, and even more so. Our extreme, our extreme secrecy, keep that in mind, folks. That's what we've been talking about. Our extreme secrecy, in most cases, the roots uh, of generational Satanism are deeply embedded in the secret societies that were set up to preserve the old bloodlines in pure Gothic and medieval forms. In short, we are the real traditional Satanists because we do see that our rituals and customs are uh, customs of the dark age, dark arts, are practiced according to brotherhood and family tradition, as it has always been handed down from the colonial American and European even earlier. We like to say that real generational Satanism is the craft of Satanism. The members of our craft have secretly been behind the scenes of world events. We mold and shape our own destinies as well as the destinies of the United States of America. Uh, you know, that is put perfectly. <coughs> that really, really is. Uh -huh. And... Whoever wrote that, I, I don't know, but they know what's going on. It's almost as if Russ Dizdar, that, you know, they listen to, they, they're either a generational Satanist or they listen to a lot of Russ Dizdar. Yeah. Okay. So, in, uh, Vicky, we last... wanted to have watched that new series, Devil in Ohio, mm -hmm. and talk about it. I'm way behind on it. I didn't get started on it, but that, I mean, that that's another example, you know, of, uh, they said that this series is based on truth, you know, and based in Ohio. Anyway, you were getting ready to say something. Yeah. So I was going to say that the last paragraph that we, we didn't read, he goes on to, of course, uh, uh, obligatorily decry SRA as like, ignore that. That's silly. That, that, that's the part of this. That's not true. Um, mm -hmm. And, and then he goes on to basically say, you cannot get into this club don't even ask. And, and basically it, it's, you know, this is closed membership. Don't even ask, don't bug us, that kind of a thing. And so 
but what's interesting is, you know, he talks about all of these secret society rituals that have been, been passed down from colonial America and, and Europe. Um, but if they're so secret and you're not allowed to talk about it, and, and then you come down in the last paragraph and you decry like, well, all that SRA stuff is ridiculous. Uh, you know, then what are you hiding? What's the big secret? You know, it seems to me that the big secret is the stuff that would be shocking and disgusting to most people, which is why you're keeping it a secret, right? And illegal. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. And, and we know that if, if you're admitting to shaping and, you know, um, manifesting the destiny of an entire country, that requires blood ritual. You do not summon powers uh, behind the spiritual veil that that can influence entire nations if if you're not offering blood. Satan is not interested in your effigies and your scarecrow burning men, fake people made out of hay. He's he's he's, he's not he's not going to be conjured by an effigy. Mm -hmm. Vic. Um... I mean, let's be honest, we can't really do this justice in, you know, the time that we put in here. We're at an hour and 15 minutes right now. Uh, we could talk about so many other things, about details of so many cases, okay? Um, we've got 32 people in here now, and I want to ask a favor of the people that are in here, the people you know, that are friends of Through the Black and, you know, we have some new people that are going to watch this later. Uh, this video will get hundreds of views later on. Um, I, we're going to drop a video next week called, uh, what is it called? Uh, Satanic Ritual Abuse Uncovered or Unveiled or something like that. It's a video that I made a couple years ago that we've been using over and over again. And it's just basically... Uh, testimony after testimony after hard-hitting testimony of satanic ritual abuse, okay? The testimonies are given in public places, and I don't know how, after you watch this video, that you can say that it's not real. Satanic ritual abuse uncovered. Thank you, Katie. Um, it's out there now. You can go watch it tonight. You can find it on Odyssey. Uh, you might be able to find it on our other Real Dark News channel. But we're going to drop it on our new channel next week, okay? And we need your guys' help to share that video, okay? I can't remember how long it is. It might be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes on for a long time. And I, 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 there's more I could add to that, okay? But we didn't add everything that we could, okay? Um. Yeah, it's on the Real Dark News website as well, linked to the Odyssey incoming. So, yeah, she's going to put that up there for us. But I'm going to ask you guys, I'm asking you now, but I'm going to be reminding you next week, please help us share this video. We want it to go viral. We want people to see this video. I mean, I am telling you, not just because I made it, but it's uh, it's a powerful video, okay? And uh, it's something that I use in my presentations, and we put it out there. Um, so uh, it's something that I'll be showing in Pennsylvania when we go there to talk about satanic ritual abuse. So, uh, yeah, please, please share that next week. I'm going to be reminding you of that next week. This is what we do. There's not a lot of people that do what we do. I mean, th there's, you know, there's some out there. And there's not a lot of people that do it the way that we do it. We like the way that we do it best. We think we learn from the best but that doesn't make us the best. Okay. Um, but we're trying real hard and we care about the survivors and the victims. And we want to, uh, we're, we're coming after them. We're, we're coming after every single Satanist. And we say that boldly. I don't say that out of arrogance. I don't say that as a tough guy. I say that out of compassion. I, I that's what compels me is, is, the uh, spirit of God, I have compassion for the victims and survivors and for those that are perpetrators. Um, you know, God uh, does not uh, rejoice, okay, in the destruction, okay, um, of the sinner. He, tri uh, mercy triumphs over judgment, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and 
there is an opportunity for repentance. Now, I will say this. Uh, there's a there's a line that you can cross. It's hard to get back from, especially when you abuse, abuse children. <sighs> it's It's hard to get back from that place. And maybe somebody's listening tonight and they haven't went that far yet. I'm telling you, don't do it. I'm telling you, turn around now. I'm telling you that you need to get out, that you need to repent. You need to renounce. You need to blow the whistle. Okay. Uh, there's no, there's no more time for games. There's no more time for uh, wild goose chases. Just come out and tell us the truth and expose these guys. Okay. Uh, Through the Black has asked for whistleblowers for years. And we've seen a lot of people come out. Okay. And we're asking for more whistleblowers. Uh, blowing the whistle on the um, on the Masons, blowing the whistle on the Satanists, all the occult groups, the witches, everybody, anybody that's involved in abusing children and abusing human beings and trafficking uh, humans. Okay, um, we we want to expose them, and uh, we're interested in your story. No guarantee that we're gonna you know that we're gonna tell your story, but. Uh, we, we're interested in hearing what you have to say. Okay. As you know, you know, we, there, there are people that are trying to infiltrate us and come against us and we have to be careful. We have to choose wisely about what we put out there and what we say. Okay. And I mean, there's a lot of, you know, the, the, there's, it's, it's a complex situation, right? But I would say, don't wait on us. You expose it yourself. Okay. And there are people that are rising up that are exposing this stuff. There are so many books written on this subject, Vic. And mm. I know you've read uh, you've read some of them. But Vic, what would you say to anybody out there, just kind of like what what I'm mentioning right now, that um, that that is dealing with this, that has this secret, that knows about something? Um, what would you say? the line that just keeps running through my head through the whole time that you were talking as you were appealing to people who might be trapped in this, or you were born into this, or you feel there's no way out. I just keep hearing Russ's voice. No one loves you more than Jesus Christ. And there's just no more powerful statement. I can, I can say you, you know what you've seen and what you've been and you know, your future uh, without him. And regardless of what you've been told, uh, no one, will ever love you the way Jesus Christ does. Yeah. There's a testimony out there. And I don't know if this is one that we actually uh, re like we re uploaded it out there. We did that a lot a few years ago. And it was of this guy that grew up in a generational satanic family. And um, this family wanted him to be trained in piano. They love doing that. And, you know, they want their uh, they want their satanic children to be you know well rounded and well trained and sophisticated and all this stuff. So they sit him to a you know to learn piano. Well, um, unfortunately for the satanic family, but fortunately for this guy, this piano teacher was a Christian, hmm. and she witnessed to this young satanic kid. By the way, part of this kid's uh, testimony was he had to kill his friend in a satanic uh, ritual sacrifice. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah. So, but anyway, this woman told him that Jesus willingly sacrificed himself for him. And he said that he was like, it didn't make sense to him because he saw a lot of sacrifices happening and none of them were willing victims. And he said, if Jesus did that for me, he must really love me if wow. he willingly sacrificed himself. So that kid became a Christian and he exposed that generational satanic family. So um, we're going to try and put out, you know, some of these old videos um, that we put out. Uh, there's a there's an interview that uh, Larry King did. It's a really good exposure. OK. Um, on these two sisters that sued their parents. And I believe they won the mm. case. Okay. Um, okay. If it's not real, explain that, you know, the, uh, folks, there's, there's just so much, so much evidence. Okay. So, um, but Vic, <clears throat> we don't care if you're an experimenter, 
if you're a self-styled Satanist. Um, we, uh, we're not going to discriminate. We want to tell you about Jesus. We want to tell you he's the only way. I don't know why you wouldn't want peace. You know, peace that comes from the inside that no matter what's happening in the world, hmm. you're okay because you have a hope of heaven, you know, and hope. I love the definition of hope. If I can remember it here from Russ, um, divine, indefeatable. I don't know if that's even a word, but Russ used to say it. Divine, indefeatable optimism. In other words, uh, it cannot be defeated. Hope, optimism from God that cannot be defeated. Okay. Joy, peace, hope. And sometimes we're happy too. Happiness is fleeting. A lot of people can have happiness, but, uh, you know, um, I see a lot of Christians that are miserable. It shouldn't be that way. Mm. I've, 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 uh, you know, I've had those days. So we're, we're allowed to be human. Give yourself, um, you know, a, uh, you know, just a time to have a bad day. Mm. But, yeah. um, Vic, we're coming back uh, tomorrow night. We're going to be doing an interview with uh, with Matthew. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to talking to this young man. Uh, this guy is a family man, and he's a, uh, a cool kid. I call him a kid because, hey, I'm 49 years old, and everybody is – a lot of people are kids to me. But, mm -hmm. hey, I'm a kid to some people, you know? So uh, <laughs> imagine that. Um <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, going to be back on Thursday night with, um, with, uh, they only come out at night chapter five and, uh, remind us again what the title of chapter five is. Mm. It has something to do with Merkava mysticism. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the Merkava chapter. So, um, don't, don't press me with such hard questions like things I wrote. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot like that. Somebody, yeah. Got it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, someone will probably beat me to it. So, folks, yeah. Uh, clouds, and, the clouds um, of heaven, the clouds of heaven, and Merkaba mysticism. Yeah. So that's coming up on on Thursday. Friday is the um, uh, the audio topsy show with the number of the beast by Iron Maiden. Saturday night, Pastor Sean Carter. Uh, is going to be um, talking about the levels of possession. So uh, anyway, uh, we want to mention something. How many people are here right now? 34. So guys, uh, this is something that we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks, and we're going to be making more announcements and releasing more information on this, okay? But um, we have something planned out in 2023. Uh, that we want, it, you know, as many people to be a part of as possible, okay? We're going to be releasing the names of people that are getting involved and they're going to be there, okay? But Through the Black is doing our own conference in 2023, April 1st and 2nd. It's called Out of the Darkness, and we want you to be there, okay? So we're letting you know now so you can mark your calendar, all right? Uh and just hey, let's uh, let's meet up in 2023, April 1st and 2nd, outside of Dayton, Ohio. Um, I'm excited to tell you who's going to be there, but I'm not going to do it yet. Uh, mm -hmm. The early registration starts November 1st. Okay, and the way that we're going to do it um, is first come, first serve. There's going to be um, so many tickets that we sell at a discounted price. Okay. And then we're going to release more, and then the price is going to go up as we get closer to the conference, okay? But um, we um, – anyway, yes, Out of the Darkness Spiritual Warfare Conference, April 1st and 2nd, 2023, Dayton, Ohio. This is the first ever Through the Black sponsored conference, and we want you to be there. We are going to do our best to train you, to teach you, okay, uh, to pray with you, to minister to you, all of that stuff. Uh, it's going to be on a Friday and a Saturday, and uh, it's going to be good, good times, okay? So, Vic, um, I have a feeling you're going to be there. 
I think I'll be there. Lord yes. Willing. Okay. Good. Good. And then we're gonna. There's some other people. I, okay. There we go. I let. I I told you one person that's gonna be there. That's right. That's but, right. Um, um, unless some guy with a cowboy hat tells me that we won't be around <laughs> by then. <laughs> well, stay away from the cowboys. Okay. <laughs> Until after April. But uh, hey, right. uh, by the grace of God, yes. Um, can't wait to give you more information on that and uh, some cool, cool stuff happening. Uh, that's just one thing that we're doing in 2023. We have some more things that we want to let you know about, but um, yeah, can't wait. Uh, can't wait to meet up with you guys there and give you guys more information. But hey, until then, um, we're going to get out of here for tonight um, and um, we'll be back tomorrow night with another show. So uh, thanks guys for hanging out with us. Oh, my God.